In this next video on how to format your novel from scratch, we are going to talk about how to choose the main font for your book, as well as other potential fonts for things like chapter headers, for example, as well as how to set up a style pane in Word specifically, and how that can help you to make changes all at once instead of painstakingly going through your novel one change at a time. You can make all of the changes throughout the entire novel with one click. Some of the things in this video might affect ebooks, but most of it is going to be really, really specific to print especially. So just keep that in mind as we go into it. Let me pause the video for one second. I should rewind really quick and introduce myself. My name is Bethany Atizada. I am your professor in this free mini masterclass, free for you at least. YouTube is paying me, so thank you in advance for watching the videos all the way through, for liking, subscribing, sharing with your friends. All of these things are like a free tip jar, so it really helps my channel. Thank you so much in advance. And it's looking like it's going to be a very full class. So let me introduce you to our TA real quick. This is my teaching assistant, Google. She is super helpful. She's available at all hours of the day and night, and she has pretty much endless resources. So I'm going to be honest with you, even though I am the professor of this course, she knows more than I do. You can definitely ask me questions if you'd like, but I got to be honest with you. I'm pretty much sharing every single bit of information that I know in this course. So I may often end up referring you to her because she actually knows quite a bit more than I do. There are five quick things you should know before class starts. Number one, I will be reading from my notes here on my computer pretty carefully since this is a very complicated subject and I don't want to miss anything. So if you see me looking down, that's why. Number two, I am only able to share what I know and what I have chosen to do. So just like everything else in publishing and writing, there's probably a million and one different ways to do formatting. This is just my personal experience. So despite this incredibly professional course where you're going to come out with a bachelor's degree in formatting, I actually have no formal training and I'm basing everything off of my own experience formatting over 10 different novels and sometimes learning things through what they call trial by fire. So again, I don't know everything about formatting, but I am going to share as much as possible in the series. And for everything else, I'm going to point you to my fabulous TA Google for any support questions you might have. Number three, I use this gorgeous template that has built-in formatting already set up, and I highly, highly recommend it. I'll talk more about this template throughout this series, so make sure you watch all the videos in the series if you want to know more. Number four, Oh yeah, did I mention that this is a series? I'm going to put all the videos in this formatting series into a playlist on YouTube that I will link below every single video. If you want to go back and watch any videos that you missed, you can find that in the description box below. Last but not least, number five, I am going to timestamp all the videos in the series as much as possible, which means that you can look at the bottom of the video to see what is in each section, and that way you can easily go back and forth and find something again if you need to watch it a second time later or a third time, but I just want to encourage you not to skip around the first time because you might miss something really important and I don't want you to be confused. Okay, back to the video. Let's start with choosing your font. So the first thing that you should know, the number one rule is that your font should not be taking away from the story itself. So that means avoid at all costs the crazy fonts with the curly cues and I don't know what the professional word is for them, but do not go overboard with the font. In fact, the honest truth is that you can't go wrong with something like Times New Roman. One of the biggest mistakes that self-published authors make here is they want to stand out and be unique. So they try to choose a really, you know, special font. But the truth is that you don't want your readers to be more interested in the font than in the story itself. So if your font is distracting a reader from the story, that is a bad sign. You can definitely use some of the fonts that you already have in Word, or if you use that DIYbookformats.com template that I am always talking about throughout the series, that comes with a font called Junicode and a couple others that are super awesome that you can download and that you'll be walked through that entire process if you download that template. But you can also go to a website like Defont, I believe it's called. Yes, there it is. And this is where you can download different fonts. So this is what I'm talking about where I say avoid at all costs doing the fancy stuff, at least for your you know, novel itself, for the story itself. Go towards basics. Like for example, this column says sans serif or regular serif. Let's go ahead and click on that just for some examples. So it's going to be, even that feels way too fancy to me. Something very 
yeah see these like maybe this one right here or maybe maybe that one something that is like over right here that feels very basic <laughs> something that's not going to draw the reader's eye is your goal when it comes to your book itself when it comes to gorgeous chapter headers on the other hand that might be an instance where you do want to draw the reader's eye and you might pick a fancier font in that case so you could go over to would not do cartoon actually those are kind of adorable oh so cute but that leads to my second tip don't just pick something because you like it it's really important to pick something that fits your genre oh my goodness not these <laughs> no 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 wizards magic maybe <laughs> if i'm in ya fantasy with magic something that looks like this could actually look really cool. Uh, and you might have to download and test some fonts to see, but that leads to my third tip, which is making sure that you are allowed to use that font, which means essentially, that's the word that I want, not public domain. There's a specific word that I want right now. Ah, here we go, commercial use. Don't mind me using Google to show you guys how I do my research, but honestly, this is the type of stuff that you wanna do. Like, do I have the legal rights to use a font? Do your research and figure out if the font is copyrighted, which means no, you do not have the right to use just any font that's out there. But there are some that are available for what's called commercial use, which means that any project where you're making money off of it, you're okay to use this font. And in some cases, you might have to purchase the rights to that font. Well, in other cases, like I believe the font, yes, it says free for personal use on the right side here. That's one other important thing that I wanted to really hit home on is that you wanna make sure you have commercial rights to use it. And so choosing a font can take as long or as short as you want it to. You can go super basic with Times New Roman or maybe use the font that comes in one of the templates that I showed you earlier in this series, such as the DIYbookformats.com template uses Junicode, as you'll see on the top left here. And so this is what I personally use, but you can definitely play around, try different things and explore. Just keep in mind those basic principles of number one, not distracting a reader and keeping it very, very simple and straightforward and professional looking. Try to look at the books on your shelf. I know I say this in every single formatting video, but really do study the books in your genre. None of them are gonna look really crazy, but when it comes to chapter headers, you might find some really gorgeous, unique scripts. So you can definitely do your research and explore those to have some more exciting elements in your book if you want. Just keep it calm when it comes to the story itself. Those are my tips for fonts, but then the other half of this video is equally important, which is how to set up a style pane so that you don't have to go through your document you know, line by line and change things one chapter at a time, which is a horrible, huge waste of time, huge headache. I'm gonna zoom way in on chapter one and give you a tiny sneak peek of the Enchanted Crown here, at least as of recording in January. It's still two months from release, keep that in mind. Say you wanna change the font of the story itself, but you do not wanna change the font for the header or the subtitles or any of that jazz. So a lot of self-published authors will go and they will you know, hold it down and control all throughout chapter one, change chapter one, and control all chapter two, change chapter two. That is a huge waste of time and a huge headache. So I'm gonna show you how to do this much quicker. In the DIYbookformats.com template, you've got some styles set up. So I'm gonna show you first how to change what's already set up, but then I'm also gonna show you how to set up styles in the first place if you wanna create your own template. So you're gonna right click and you're gonna click modify. So here's the Junicode font that we talked about. And like we talked about in other videos in the series, here's the font size, here's the justification. Um, you can bold it if you want to. Um, you can set up some first paragraph styles and you can click this little box on the bottom to get even deeper into it, into things like the paragraph and whatnot. So let's take a look specifically at the font. And right now you're gonna see a really cute little preview of what the current font is. But let's say that I wanna change this to one of the fonts that are set up in Word. And so obviously Times New Roman is the one that I've been recommending to you guys. So let's go ahead and find that there it is okay now it's funny because i believe the preview updates no matter what let's find out let's do another one and see if it updates yep oh that's a pretty font 
That one is more fancy, but I really like it. We're gonna try changing the chapter to that in a minute. But let's go really basic, because I really, really, really do recommend that your main story font is not crazy. So this one barely changed at all. Junicode and Times New Roman looks super similar to me. And I'm gonna click okay, okay. And there you go. I'm gonna do a backspace. There's the Junicode. It's so small of a difference. It honestly looks almost exactly the same to me. I'm not gonna lie. So just to give you an example of why you could just absolutely use the Times New Roman that you have. But now let's do chapter one. And now this on the top left is Steelfish. I'm gonna say rig, even though that's not probably how you say it. But you guys saw that I really liked that other one under the T's. So I'm gonna scroll down. Was it this one? I think so. <gasps> Ooh, that's so pretty. Oh my gosh. All right, so I was testing it on just chapter one here. Ooh, chapter three, four, those didn't change. That's a perfect example of how I don't wanna go through all 53 of these and change them all. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. And obviously it's not gonna change the writing itself. Just keep that in mind. But I'm gonna go ahead and find, where is my header? Right here. We are currently working in heading one. So I'm gonna right click modify just like last time and within the fonts here well you probably could change it up there as well um i'm gonna go ahead and find that gorgeous font that i really really like i'm probably gonna go with this you guys i think it's gorgeous oh that just looks so good i really like that all right i'm clicking okay and okay again and now of course like i said they're not gonna add in the writing for you but now that chapter two chapter three that's a different font. Look at that gorgeousness. Oh my goodness. So I still have to actually put in the writing itself, but isn't that beautiful? Let me give you a better example with the epilogue because that's gonna be an actual word. So that was changed. I didn't do any changing. All of the headers in the entire document were changed for me, including this one that I need to work on and my note from the author that I might wanna add. Just, oh my gosh. I just really love that. That looks so good. This right here, when I click through the style pane, I find that this one is currently labeled as a quote. So let's pretend. I kind of like that style. I like the subtitle to be a little more flowy right next to the really straightforward font. They look really, really nice together. And that's Open Sans, if I'm saying that right. But let's go ahead and play around with that as well, just to give you an example of how you can play with this. So under that, do we want to make it exactly the same? I don't know. Obviously changing the entire manuscript is a little more complex, so I might suggest playing with the like a sentence level at a time until you find something you like and then doing this change, but just for kicks. Oh, look at that. See, it shows you in the preview, so you don't actually have to make the change if you're like, no, 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 I don't like it. But you can see that the font style does have italics on it right now, and it is a little bit bigger than the story itself. So if you want to, you can play around like this. Do, 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 do. What is wingdings? <laughs> no, 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 no. Ooh, <gasps> that is also gorgeous. Okay, now technically this is book four in the series and I like to keep my books consistent if possible. So this is something I did a little bit more with book one and then I wanna probably keep most of my books consistent throughout, but just for kicks, let's try it out because that's beautiful. Now see, I don't like that. I think I'm gonna keep it as is. I don't wanna go too crazy, but I just wanted to show you guys. Okay, so now let me show you with a brand new blank template. So you'll notice that Word actually does put in some styles in the style pane right here already. And if you wanted to, you could just take what's already in here. So you got a title, then you've got your content. You could use what they have in here. Is there a main body? Let's see. Yeah, normal. So if you wanted to, you could change the styles that are already in there, or you could actually add a new style. Let's start with same concept where we change it. So let's say we want the main body of our book to be Times New Roman. Come back. I saw you. Where'd you go? There it is. And we want it to be smaller. That's standard 11 point, let's say. And I would like to name this because I'm used to seeing main body. I'd like to name it main body because that's what it is. And I'm gonna click okay. I wanted to make sure it was working. So I went even smaller here. Okay, it's working. I am so not used to seeing a document this big, you guys. <laughs> it's creeping me out. Um, okay, so let's set up our chapter header. So this is right now the title. Let's make it even bigger. 
because it's a book title. Maybe not that big, that's kind of huge. And let's make it that one that we were admiring because it's so pretty. And then let's make it centered. Where is it? Right there. So this is changing all headers going forward. I'll show you what that means in a second. Let's click OK. So now let's make this chapter one. OK, and then we've got our content. In the last video in this series, I'm going to show you how to put everything that I've been talking about together and format everything with those 10 basic rules, the font size, the chapter headers, you name it, all of that from scratch. I'm going to put it all together. But for right now, we're going to move on because you can see how setting up the style pane here uh, is as easy as clicking modify and then playing around. But the last thing I want to point out is you can right click the style pane and you could actually add a brand new style by clicking this button right here. So you can name it I'm gonna name it Bethany style because it's, you know, real fancy. And uh, currently my style is definitely this font. I just love it so much. And I don't know, I'm feeling like my style's really huge. <laughs> so you get the idea. This is how you create styles in the style pane. And then the way it becomes applicable is for example, if I'm writing content and I'm writing stuff and let's say I have, you know, an actual book with tons of content. <laughs> We're obviously never going to do this. This is breaking tons of formatting rules, but instead of me going one by one and fixing these chapter headers one by one, I can simply update that style of the chapter header at the top and change everything in one big go. So let's pretend I want all of the chapter headers to be tiny little baby chapter headers. Boom updated all of them throughout the entire manuscript. You saw that in The Enchanted Crown, I have 53 chapters. It's a big book with a lot of character POVs. I do not have to go through every single one of those one at a time. I make one change and they are all updated. That was a lot of info, I know. So like I said, at the end of this formatting series, I'm gonna bring it all together, but I wanted you to have a really solid understanding of fonts and how to choose the best ones for your novel and then also how to set up the style pane. I hope this has helped you feel more confident about the styles and the fonts that you choose. And so now we're gonna go into the next video in this series, which is, adding images to your book like maps or even fancier chapter headers or character art or other artwork or your author bio or your title page etc so if you've missed any of the other videos in the formatting series everything is linked below but i will see you guys in the next video bye